Come on now, can you lift up your voices to him that is worthy of all the praise and the glory and the honor? King Jesus, can we go ahead and take 10, 15 more seconds and just fill up this atmosphere one more time? Because we're going to do this for all of eternity. So let's just start right now. Let's just give him praise. Let's give him glory. Let's give him honor. Let's celebrate the name above every other name. The name of King Jesus. The one who, in whose name we gather. The name by which we are saved. The King of Kings. He is God. He is the Lord and the Savior of our life. We worship you, Jesus. We exalt your name. It is all about Jesus. It is always Jesus. It is only Jesus. We worship you. We glorify you. You are worthy of it all, God. Come alive in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Come on. And all the time, come on, I want you to turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, get ready for the word. Let's go. Come on, welcome everybody. How's everybody doing tonight? Y'all can have a seat in the presence of the Lord. Thank you, worship team. Thank you, band. Thank you, vocalists. Can we just honor the pastors of this house, the senior pastors? Can we honor them? Pastor Ernie and his wife, so, so grateful for the work of ministry being done here at Restoration Worship. What a joy it is to be able to be with you. I'm joined tonight, thank you so much. I'm joined by my wife. My wife is here. Can you give a hand for my wife? My wife, Alini. I also have one of our leaders here, our outreach director, Ian Morrison. If you could just give a hand for Ian. He's doing an amazing job. Super grateful for him and his partnership and the work that God is doing in Rhode Island. Come on, how many of y'all know that God does big things in small places? God does big things in small places. They ask, can anything good come out of Nazareth? And I say, can anything good come out of Rhode Island? And the answer is yes. God is doing a new thing. God is doing a new thing in our state in this time and I'm grateful for people, pastors, leaders like Pastor Ernie and this house that are proclaiming the name of Jesus in the land of the living. Come on. And your worship team. I mean, goodness of God and, and visions and dreams. And I mean, you are accomplishing what churches set out to do in years. Now, God, God has laid such a foundation. There's a legacy that Pastor Ernie stands on. But I, I just want to celebrate the move of God in this house and the work and the labor. Come on. Pastoring is never easy. Pastoring in COVID. Come on. Pastoring in a pandemic. Leading a church. And we are still here, still standing, still thriving. God is doing a new thing. And man, it's just a good, it's a, it, we get to be a part of it. Y'all excited for the word of God? Y'all yes. excited for the word of God? Awesome. So my name, is, my name is Shane. I pastor in Pawtucket. So like 10 minutes that way. And, uh, and, and I'm just grateful to be here tonight. Last time I was here, it was late 2019, before everything went down in early 2020. And I preached a little message on Cumberland Farms. And, 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 uh, and, and so that we had fun that night. But it is good to be back. And there's a new word that God has for us tonight. If you have your Bibles or your YouVersion Bible app, I want to jump right into the scriptures. Because we're going to lay a foundation here that we're going to stand on for the rest of this evening it's going to come out of the book of Jonah, chapter 1. Jonah, chapter 1. Uh, it's probably going to be up on the screen. If you, if you don't have the, the Bible uh, or, or you version. you should go ahead and download that. Get the version Bible app. You should be in your word. You should get a devotional plan going. You should start tonight uh, because the word of God is everything to us. Amen? Amen. Jonah, chapter 1, verses 1 through 3. My version puts it this way. It says, now the word of the Lord came to Jonah, the son of Amittai, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and call out against it, for their evil has come up before me. Verse 3. But Jonah rose to flee to Tarshish, away from the presence of the Lord. He went down to Joppa. He found a ship going to Tarshish. He paid the fare, went down into the ship to go with them to Tarshish, away from the presence of the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Can we pray tonight? 
Father God, I thank you for the reading of your word. And Lord, I know this scripture seems like a downer, but Lord, there's a great word coming from it. And so Lord, would you just prepare our hearts for what you have for us tonight? We pray in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. amen. When it comes to GPS, there are three types of people. There are Google Maps people. There are Waze people. And then there are the just I know the way people. These are the folks that just never want directions to anywhere. Now, have you ever met the person that's always trying to give out directions and you're like, bro, it's 2021. You can tell me, go down, take a left, take a right, go by the old Sears and then take a, and then it's like, I'm not listening to anything you are saying. I'm just going to put it in ways as soon as you are done talking. How many of y'all are ways people? Come on. Are there ways people in the room? You like ways, you like ways, you like ways, live by ways. Google maps people. Can you show yourself? Now, what I'm confused about, is there still Apple Maps? Is that still a thing? I've heard conflicting stories. I don't even know. I haven't looked at that app in years. I swear I've deleted it. But there's different types of people. Now, my thing with GP, I'm a Google Maps guy. And with me, I like using Google Maps on silent. Amen. Silent. So I'll hold my phone. I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. Listen to the message. I, I will, I'll, I'll hold the phone, which is not good. I need to get one of those, like, uh, mounts. And uh, I should probably hop on Amazon tonight and get it. And, uh, and, and I'll just, I'll, I'll watch and go. My wife does not approve of this strategy. She likes the voice to talk. But when we're driving together, and I'm driving through, like, Boston, for example, with Google Maps looking and going, I will frequently make a mistake, to which she will say, always the same line, Shane, if you would put the voice to talk, it would be so much easier. And she's right, because to live by what I see here Come on. and then what I see there leads to mistakes. If I would just listen to the voice of one behind me saying, this is the way, Come on. walk in it, I could just go based upon what I hear. We walk by faith, not by Maybe the reason we've made mistakes is because we're trying to compare what we see here to what we see in front of us. If you would put the voice to talk, it would be so much easier. If you would just listen to the voice that speaks, it would be so much easier. But then there's an added spiritual truth. You can have a voice that speaks, and you can have a thing that you can see. But the driving, the, the steering wheel is still in your hands, and you have a decision to make. Will you do what you have heard, or will you go in an opposite direction? Because to hear it and to do it is two different things. The word says, let us not only be hearers of the word and so deceive ourselves, do what it says. Which means that human beings have a tendency to hear but not do. We hear the way to go but don't put it into practice. We hear the voice of one behind us saying, this is the way, walk in it. But yet we think that there's a better way. And scripture says this, that there is a way that seems right to man, but in the end it leads to destruction. How many of y'all know tonight that what we need to do is not only hear the word of God, but put the word of God into practice. To do as it says. And I know in 2021, with the deconstruction of our faith, Many will say that the scriptures are old and ancient and irrelevant, but I would dare say that heaven and earth will pass away, but the word of God is the only source of truth that the world needs. I need somebody in Providence, south side of Providence, to get up and give God a shout of praise tonight.
If you would put the voice to talk, it would be so much easier. But Jonah heard where he should go, saw where he should go, and said, nah. Exactly. He heard the voice. The word of the Lord came to Jonah, son of Amittai, saying, arise, go to Nineveh. He heard it. Go to Nineveh. He saw it. And he said, nah. I'm going to go to Tarshish. If you go to the little Bible maps at the back of your Bible, there's Nineveh to the right, Tarshish to the left. Nineveh east, Tarshish west. And here's what I find fascinating about Jonah in his disobedience. He says, no, I'm going to go to Tarshish, but Tarshish, you got to go by boat. So in order to get to Tarshish, i got to go first to Joppa. I got to go to Joppa to get a boat to go to Tarshish. So I looked up, what, is, what does Joppa mean? Joppa means beautiful. And Joppa is the first step to Tarshish. Because usually the first step out of God's will is beautiful. The first step out of God's will is not destruction. The first step out of God's presence is not, it's, it's not like storm. The first step out of God's will is not dramatic. The first step outside of God's will does not look threatening. The first step looks beautiful. And you think the beauty of the first step means it's the right thing for you. But little do you know there's the first step to destruction. He's, he's going to Tarshish through Joppa. Joppa's the first step. Joppa's beautiful. The first step out of God's will is beautiful. That girl may be beautiful. That guy may look beautiful. But what if they are the first step to your demise? Just because he is appealing to the eyes, just because she is appealing to the eyes, just because that job is appealing to the eyes and to the pocket and to your budget does not mean it's where God wants you to be. Just because it shines bright does not mean it's a diamond. Just because it glitters does not mean it's gold. Just because it sounds good doesn't mean it's good for you. Just because it feeds you doesn't mean it will satisfy you. Just because it wets your palate does not mean it will satisfy your thirst. Because the first step out of God's will is usually comfortable, beautiful, cozy, chic, modern. And we want it because it looks good, sounds good, appeals to our senses. But little do we know that Joppa is the first step to our demise. And so Jonah is not called to Joppa. Jonah is called to Nineveh. Jonah is called to go where God has called him to go. And he has another idea in mind. He says, I'm going to go to Tarshish. But in order for you to get to Tarshish, you've got to go through somewhere. And all of us are going to find a little stepping stone to where your flesh wants to go oh man you'll find a little you'll find a stepping stone you'll find a spot that's going to affirm where you want to go there will always be a city that has a ship that is going to the city you want to go to there will always be a friend that has the word of counsel, that agrees with the thing you want to hear. There will always be a YouTube preacher. There will always be a YouTube preacher that agrees with you on everything and then makes you look at your pastor with a stank eye. But it's the first step out of God's will. Just because it sounds right doesn't mean it is right. One thing that I grew so sick and tired of in 2020 is screenshotted tweets. Screenshotted tweets that have the appearance of wisdom but are foolishness. 
people posting rants and posts and comments and replies, acting like they know everything about everything about everyone. And it's foolishness because our generation likes to have little stepping stones. And these stepping stones look beautiful and they look smart and they look wise and they look like the right thing. But it's the first step out of God's will. Some of us have paid more attention to screenshotted tweets than hiding God's word in our hearts, and it's starting to show. Screen, if you pay more mind to screenshotted tweets than the verse of the day, we have a problem. So he goes to Joppa. And he finds a ship that's going where? To Tarshish. You know what millennial Jonah would say? Confirmation. If Jonah were a millennial and Jonah went to Joppa looking for a ship to Tarshish and he found one, it's a sign. It's a sign. It's It's confirmation. But availability An open door is not always the sign of God's door for you. A lot of us are like, nah, it's an open door. We think God's will is, the opposite of God's will is going to be closed doors. But what if there are multiple open doors to test your obedience? If you're going to walk through every open door, your life is going to be a hot mess in a quick minute. There's just something about open doors that's appealing to us. But imagine, though, right? Jonah doesn't want to go to Nineveh. Nineveh is the capital of the Syrian Empire. Those are, like, those are heathens. Those people, like, they're not even the people of God. Like, I'm just not trying to go there. I'm not trying to plant a church there. I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to evangelize there. It's like the way the rest of the country looks at New England. It's like, nah. <laughs> you want to plant a church? Go to Dallas. You want to plant a church? You want to plant a church? Are you from Dallas? Yeah, you want to plant a church? Go to ATL. You want to plant a church? Go to the South. And God is saying, go to Nineveh. I find, star, I find parallels between Nineveh and New England. Heathen. That's where God called him. And he finds a ship that's going in the opposite direction. I want to speak to the person tonight who's like, no, nah, I don't want to go to Nineveh. I want to go to Tarshish, and I just found a ship to get there. It must be confirmation. It's not. It's not. Because anything that is not going to take you to where God wants you to be is not God's will. And that's like the most elementary truth I've ever preached in my life. But it's the most necessary. Because some of us be acting like God all of a sudden changed his mind. We act like God's shocked. Oh, there's a ship to Tarshish? I didn't know that was going to happen. <laughs> Oh, my bad, Jonah. I didn't realize there were ships to Tarshish. If I had known, I would have called you to go to Tarshish. No, 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 no. Just because it's a... But then he finds a ship. He pays the fare. He pays to get on this ship away from the presence of God. Check me. To follow Christ is costly. To do it your way is costly. Count the cost. To obey, there is a cost to being a disciple of Jesus. There is a cost to doing it your way. What are you willing to pay? Here's the thing. Doing it your way may cost less here. But it costs your life later. Doing it God's way will cost your life here. 
And then we have eternity later. So you got to take your pick. Where do you want to live? Do you want to live your way here and now? Go ahead. But in the end, it leads to destruction. Do you want to do it God's way? It's going to cost you everything here. But then we have the blessed hope of eternity. So you got to take your pick. When do you want to enjoy? I'd rather enjoy eternity than enjoy 70, 80, 90, maybe 100 years here. But then some of us are living out wild for these 70, 80, 90. Grandma partying it up in her 90s. With no mind for eternity. You see the, you see the nuance here? Take your pick, count the cost. But then he finds the ship, pays the fare, and it says he went down into the ship with them. Because you will always find people that are going to agree with where you want to go, pay the price you want to pay, and go away from the presence of God with you. There will always be folks that agree with you. They agree. They agree. They're like, yeah, let's roll out to Tarshish, baby. Let's go. But I would rather go alone to Nineveh than go to my destruction accompanied to Tarshish. Do you want to follow Jesus? Get used to walking a lot of parts of your story alone. Jesus said it this way. The road is wide to destruction and many find it. The the road to life is narrow and few find it. So the crowd is not always a sign of where you should be. I think this is appropriate even in church world. The crowd is, I will let you know, the crowd, (laughs) that, that was good. The crowd, let us know. The crowd is not always a sign of where you need to be. Do you want to follow Jesus? Get used to walking a lot of the journey by yourself. He gets in the ship. He pays the fare. He pays the thing. He gets in with them. He goes. And then scripture says, away from the presence of the Lord. Because disobedience will lead you away from the presence of the Lord. I would, because check this though. This is what got me. Bible maps in the back, right? He's in the middle. He's called to Nineveh. How do you get to Nineveh? By land. How do we get there by land? We walk. We get on a donkey. We we find a way. There's no whip. There's no Uber. We're going by foot. (laughs) The way to Tarshish is by boat, which means they already had the technology. We can sail there. Which way is easier? Sail. The way to Nineveh is hard. The way to Tarshish is easy. The way to Tarshish is easy, but it's away from the presence of the Lord. The way to Nineveh is hard, but it's with the presence of the Lord. I would rather walk the hard way with God than the easy way without God. You have to make a pick of whose presence you want. Because Jonah was not alone. He was accompanied by people that were also going away from the presence of the Lord, but they weren't called, so it didn't really matter. Jonah was called. So he's going with all his boys, but away from the presence of God. God was not with him. So to be called to Nineveh meant to go alone, but he would be accompanied by the presence of the Lord. I would rather walk the hard way with God Then the easy way without God. So he hops on the boat, gets in with his boys, pays the fare. 
set, set sail, and he's like, you, you know that commercial like Block Island? Sail on the Block Island ferry. <laughs> da, 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 da. That's Jonah. <laughs> They'd be acting like Block Island's Hawaii, right? <laughs> sail away on the Block Island ferry. Da, 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 da. Sail away on the Tarshish ferry. Da, 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 da. And they're just going. And then a storm comes. Yo, this must have hit Jonah square in the face. He's like, dang, I almost did it. Almost got away with it. Almost. The, 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 and and he, here's what's funny. The storm starts, and where's Jonah? He's asleep. He's asleep in the bottom of the boat. And the dudes up top on the deck are freaking out. What do they start doing? They start crying out to their gods, each one crying out to their own god. That's the first thing they did, because the one you cry out to first in a storm is your god. The one you cry out to first in a storm is your god. And then what they tried to do is they tried to rid themselves of cargo that carried no weight. So what they did was they just started throwing stuff overboard. They're like, this chair got to go. This, 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 this box got to go. This stuff got to go. And this is what we do. When we're in storms, we start getting rid of stuff that did not cause the storm. They're in a storm, and now they're throwing things overboard that did not cause the storm. Exhibit A. When we are in a financial storm, the first thing, we're like, tithing, you got to go. Tithing did not cause your storm. Your online shopping did. Mercy, God, comfort our hearts. Comfort us, Lord, with the presence of Jesus. We start throwing stuff overboard that did not cause our problem. You be spending every dollar you got on stuff you don't need to impress people that don't care about you, and your 10%'s the problem? Give me a break. We throw stuff overboard that did not cause the... You start throwing overboard healthy friendships. And you keep the toxic ones. Family. What? They've been there for you. Don't get me started. We're in a storm. Church. We're in... Don't have time, right? Time is our storm. The hour and a half on Sunday is really what's causing your schedule to be messed up. Give me a break. Give me a break. Give me a break. I'm a guest, so I can just say whatever I want tonight. Give me a break. You got seven days a week, 24 hours a day. And the hour and a half on a Sunday morning's your problem? You ain't that busy. You're not that busy. Why is church the first thing to go? Why is tithing the first thing to go? Why are your healthy friendships the first thing to go? Because we throw overboard the things that carry the least weight in our life. You throw tithe overboard? That thing never carried weight for you. Amazon clearly carries more weight for you. You throw church overboard first? You throw your pastor overboard first? No, 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 I'm Pastor Ernie. I'm talking about that church down there, the one we, pa- <laughs> the one we passed on the way in. Two lights. No, not Taneo's church, the one after Taneo's church. Because Taneo's church is too, I'm talking... Down, 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 down. Those up in Woonsocket, those over there. Way up 295. Not even talking about here. We throw stuff overboard that carries 
the least weight for us. So we start showing what's priority to us by what we throw overboard first. Some of us are so tied to toxic friendships, and we know they're toxic, but we're so tied up in them that we can't throw them overboard. We're like, I can't do it. I know they're terrible for me, but I can't do it. I know that they mess up my spiritual walk time and time again, but I can't do it. I can't throw them overboard. They're causing your storm. Boat's over here like going wild, and you're like, I know it's them, but I can't do it. <laughs> Yo, kick their butt. So this is what's funny about the story. The dudes start gambling. I'm like, who brought dice, right? Like, in the middle of the storm, ship is going crazy. They're like, somebody get the dice. They start casting lots. No lies. That's what scripture says. Start casting lots to find out whose fault it was. They were in the storm, and it lands on Jonah. Jonah's like, busted. It is me. Throw me overboard, he says. It's crazy how Jonah's not even taking responsibility to the point that he's like, I'll jump. He's like, throw me overboard. I'm like, Jonah, man up. Jump. <laughs> Jump. And then the dudes on the ship are like, nah, dude, we can't do that to you. So they start trying to row back with Jonah. But there's a principle here. You can never row back to land with the thing that got you into the storm. The reset has to happen in the storm. Some of us are trying to go, nah, undo choice. No, you got to deal with the consequences of choices right now. And you got to make some decisions tonight. What are you going to throw overboard? Because you can't have your cake and eat it too. Nah, Jonah, we know it's your fault, but let's row back. And they figured out they couldn't row back, and neither can you. Some of us are like, oh, oh, let's go. Oh, oh, let's just go back to 2010 when I was focused. <laughs> and you can't. You can't. You got to throw stuff overboard tonight. You got to decide tonight, this is the thing that's been messing me up. And so they're like, we can't row back. Jonah, you're out. And they throw Jonah overboard. Can I get some keys to soften this while I end? Because this is what I find. They throw Jonah overboard, and then a big fish comes, right? Swallows that dude up. His death sentence was already determined the moment they threw him overboard. He was going to die. When the fish came and ate Jonah... That's like double death sentence. You've now been eaten in an environment where you are not going to survive. But I remind you of something that gets me every time. The thing that looked like it was killing Jonah was actually the thing that God had appointed to preserve Jonah's life. Despite Jonah's ongoing disobedience, despite the fact that he had gone left when, G when God said right, and now it looks like he's dead. A fish comes eating him. It now looks like he's double dead. The thing that looked like it was taking him out was actually the thing God was using to preserve him and give him a second chance. A lot of people ask in church circles, can you lose your salvation? People love that question. And I'm not going to try to answer that right now. But I will tell you this. You can run, but you can't hide. You can try to go the opposite direction of where God has called you to. The psalmist puts it this way. God, if I went to the far side of the sea, if I went down into the depths, if I go to the mountains, you're still there. The song you guys wrote about the goodness of God, it's like chasing after you. It's following after you. You can run, but you can't. I don't know if you can lose your salvation or not because I'm not God. I'm not the judge. But I do know this, is that when God has his hand on somebody, 
Oh, you can go to Joppa, you can go to Tarshish, you can get on whatever boat to anywhere, and you're going to just know this isn't where I should be. These aren't the people I should be here with. I shouldn't even be on this boat. I shouldn't be doing this. And the presence of God and the Spirit of God will continually speak to you, and you will feel that conviction until you decide to be thrown overboard. God will give you a second chance because he's a gracious God, and he will redirect your story, give you a second chance, and send you in your way to purpose and identity and fulfillment because that's who my God is. But the story of Jonah isn't about Jonah. And that's what gets to me. A lot of times we'll read these Bible stories we'll be like, I'm David and I'm slaying my giants. Or we'll be like, I'm Abraham and I'm sacrificing my Isaac. Or we'll be like, I'm Ruth waiting for my Boaz. (laughs) I'm Esther called for such a time as this. I'm this, I'm that. But you know what? It's not about you at all. I've preached this whole story of Jonah only to end on this point that it's not about you. This story is actually about someone else. Because if Jonah was disobedient, there has to be a second Jonah that was obedient. If this Jonah fled the other way, opposite from the presence of God, there had to be someone else that would do the will of the Father to the point of death. If Jonah was thrown overboard because of his own sins, surely there would be a second Jonah that was thrown overboard despite being sinless. If there was Jonah who was consumed by a belly of a whale for three days, surely there was a second Jonah that was consumed by a grave for three days. See, if the belly of the fish looked like the end of the story, so did the cross. Because Jesus is the second and the better Jonah. He is the one that was obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. But scripture says God has highly exalted him and given him the name that is above every name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Because it's always Jesus. It's only Jesus. It's forever Jesus. You see, the belly of the fish looked like the end of Jonah's story, and the cross looked like the end of Jesus's. But on the other side of death, there's always resurrection power. The cross was actually the vessel that God would use to bring about new life to everyone that would believe in him. So you can run, but you can't hide. You can go wherever you want on the face of the earth. You can take selfies in Bali and in Greece. Amen. We receive it. (laughs) Right? Let's go. I'm down. Field trip. No matter where you go, surely goodness and mercy are following me. Oh, if you would just put the voice to talk it would be so much easier. There is a voice. It's the voice of the shepherd behind me saying, Shane, this is the way. Walk in it. And even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for he is with me. So even if people leave me, I'm not alone. Even if they abandon me, I am not left orphaned. In this world, you will face trials, but take heart. He's overcome the world. We've journeyed through 20, whatever, how many, seems like 20,000 months of 2020 and 2021. I'm still in 2019, honestly. Same, Same, right? Like, I'm like, it's still 2019, right? It's been so long and we have gone through so much. A lot of storms. Let's not make the storm that we're all going through worse by being disobedient on top of it.
tonight, we're going to do an altar call. Could you stand with me? I love altar calls, by the way. I love it. I love responding to the word of God. Tonight, we're going to be obedient. I need you to identify some things that you need to throw overboard. And if you're like, actually, nothing. That's the thing you got to throw overboard. We all have something. We all have something that we need to throw overboard so that we can be who God has called us to be and go where God has called us to go. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Can we sing House of Miracles? I think these are the keys for it, chords for it. Tonight, if you're saying, Pastor Shane, I, this word was for me. I'm going to ask you to lift a hand right where you are. Just say, this was a word that I needed to hear. All right? I see those hands that are lifted. I see those hands that are lifted. Now you can put those hands down. Now I want you to search within yourself and identify something. We can't throw everything overboard right here tonight. We can start. We can start. And I want you to identify something that God is calling you to surrender to him. To surrender to him. And take the lead. We're going to do this in the context of worship by saying, Lord, you can have, you can have this. You can have this. And once you've identified something, I want you to take a step out of your seat and come forward. Because by doing that, what you're saying is, I'm not just going to talk about it. I'm going to be about it. Thank you, Jesus. Let's go ahead and be obedient. Be obedient as the Lord leads. Go ahead, worship team. Let's, let's go ahead and get into praise. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Glory be to your name, King Jesus. This is a house of miracles. And miracles happen when we partner with the presence of God. Miracles happen when we make a decision. And we say, Lord, have this. Have this. That's a miracle. When you say, Lord, I surrender, that's a miracle. That's a miracle. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, right now, I pray in the mighty name of Jesus. Let's lift up our voice all around this room, front to back, side to side. Lift up your voices. Let's be in agreement and in faith with everybody. In the name of Jesus.